Almighty God says, Satan uses fame and gain to control man's thoughts until it is all that is on their mind. They struggle for it, suffer for it, endure humiliation, sacrifice everything, and make judgments or decisions based on fame and gain. In this way, Satan imprisons man with invisible shackles, and man has neither the strength nor the courage to break free. Unaware, they bear these shackles and push onward with difficulty. For fame and gain, man shuns and betrays God, becoming increasingly wicked. Man's quest for Satan's fame and gain destroys generation after generation. Looking at Satan's actions, are its motives not detestable? Maybe today you still cannot see Satan's sinister motives. Because you think one cannot live without fame and gain. You think that without fame and gain, people will no longer see the path ahead, no longer see their goals and their future will become dark. But slowly, one day, you will recognize fame and gain are heavy shackles that imprison man. When that day comes, you will resist Satan's control, resist the shackles Satan uses to imprison you. Once you decide to throw off what Satan has instilled in you, you'll make a clean break from Satan. You will begin to truly loathe all that Satan has given you. Only then will you find a real love and yearning for God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to share my experience relating to God's words. Mm -hmm. Great. In 2015, I was elected to be a church leader. I was really excited and thought that being elected as a leader out of dozens must mean that I was better than the others. During my role as leader, brothers and sisters would come to me for help with their life entry, and team leaders would discuss with me issues they encountered. I couldn't help feeling superior. I walked around arrogantly, my chest puffed out, and was bursting with confidence in our gatherings. After a while, I noticed Sister Lou, a coworker, could fellowship on the truth very clearly and could grasp the root of people's problems in order to resolve them. She also pointed out paths of practice. Everyone would listen. I admired and envied her. But not to be outdone, I carefully prepared before every gathering, racking my brain, thinking how to fellowship effectively with inspiration so I'd appear better than her. The sight of my brother's and sister's approval of my fellowship pleased me and gave me a sense of accomplishment. Later on, I discovered Brother Zhang had quite a bit of professional knowledge of movies and was good with computers. Brothers and sisters filming would often discuss these topics with him. As a church leader, I had nothing to add. I felt like a fifth wheel, and that frustrated me. I thought that by seeking out Brother Zhang, they must think I am inferior. I set out to learn more about movies. Then they would come to see me with their issues. I started getting up early and staying up late to learn more about movies, so I could know more. I disregarded the church's issues, as well as the condition of my brothers and sisters. After a while, work-related problems appeared from several teams, and I could not resolve them. Since my brother's and sister's condition was unsolved, film production was delayed and more problems surfaced. Under so much pressure, I could hardly breathe. The agony. I worried what others would think of me if they thought I was incapable and unqualified as a leader. I was at risk of losing my leadership position. My thoughts became negative. I felt defeated and no longer had energy. Depressed and ignoring my duties, 
I lost the work of the Holy Spirit. I achieved nothing and was replaced. At that moment, I felt ashamed and wanted the earth to swallow me up. I wondered, will the brothers and sisters call me unqualified and incapable? The more I dwelled on it, the more upset I got. That night, I lay in bed tossing, turning, unable to sleep. I prayed to God, repeatedly asking Him to help me know myself. Then I read God's words. In your seeking, you hold too many notions, hopes, and futures. This work is to deal with your desire for status and wild desires. Hopes, status, and notions are typical of satanic disposition. They exist in people's hearts because Satan's poisons always corrode their thoughts. And people are unable to resist temptation from Satan. They are unaware they live in sin. Yet they think, as believers, God must bless us and arrange everything for us appropriately. As believers, we must be superior and we must have more status, a better future. Since we believe God must bless us limitlessly, otherwise it wouldn't be called believing in God. The more you seek this way, the less you reap. The greater a person's desire for status, the more they will be dealt with and have to undergo refinement. Such people are worthless. They must be dealt with adequately in order for them to let go of their greed. Pursuing this way until the end, you will reap nothing. Those who do not pursue life cannot be transformed, and those who do not seek truth cannot gain truth. You do not focus on personal transformation and entry, but on extravagant desires and things that constrain your relationship and love for God. Can those things transform you? Can they bring you into the kingdom? Amen. 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 I reflected on my state after reading this. When working as a leader, I did nothing but pursue status and prestige. When I saw Sister Lou's fellowship on truth was better than mine, I was afraid. I thought of how I could fellowship better than her in order to obtain admiration and praise. Brother Zhang had professional skills. Brothers and sisters came to him with their issues. I was jealous and rejected him. I worked hard to learn more and surpass him, even ignoring problems within teams. When I couldn't resolve their problems, I didn't lean on God or seek the truth and find solutions through fellowship. I was obsessed with my status, afraid of losing my position if I didn't do my duty well. I then realized I wasn't doing my duty out of consideration of God's will. Instead, I was satisfying my ambition to be superior over others. Brothers and sisters elected me as a church leader, but I didn't consider the church's work and their life entry. I wasn't responsible in my duty and ended up harming the church's work. I was selfish and vile. I wasn't doing my duty. I was doing evil and resisting God. Yes. I regretted being on the wrong path, fighting for status and gain. Being dismissed of my duties was God's judgment. He wasn't eliminating me, but replaced me so I could reflect on my behavior. That was God protecting and saving me. Amen. 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 My condition improved with devotionals and reflection. I was given routine duties by church leaders. I was grateful to God for that chance and was resolved to treasure those duties and stop pursuing status and prestige in opposition to God. Wonderful. Wonderful. After that experience, I thought I could let go of my desire for status and prestige. But I was too far gone. These satanic dispositions can't be resolved with the little reflection. So... God set up another situation to expose and save me. Amen. Yes. 
A few months later, the church leader told us to select a team leader. As soon as I heard this, I started to think, will I have a shot at being elected? I'm a capable worker, but I don't have any professional skills, so my chances aren't great. Then I considered others on the team. Brother Zhang had professional skills. His fellowship on the truth was practical. He had a sense of justice and upheld the church's work. It looked like he was more likely to be chosen. I thought about how I delegated work to Brother Zhang as I was a church leader. But if he was elected as the team leader, he'd tell me what to do. Would that make me look inferior? This made me uncomfortable. On election day, I was nervous and I felt conflicted. Who should I vote for? For Brother Zhang? I thought about how most brothers and sisters, even some from other teams, came to him for help all the time. It made him look so good. If he was team leader, wouldn't he outshine me? I didn't want to vote for him anymore. But I lacked professional skills, not qualified to be the team leader. I felt depressed and dejected. I hated my work inexperience. <sighs> then a terrible thought came to me. If I can't be team leader, you can't either. So I voted for Brother Wu, who had less professional skills. Surprisingly, Brother Zhang was still voted in. I wasn't pleased to see things turn out that way. But I did have an uneasy feeling that I had done something shameful. Later, I read God's words. If some people see someone who's better, they suppress them, start a rumor, or devise an immoral act so that others don't look up to them, and no one seems any better. This is the disposition of arrogance and self-righteousness. It is crooked, deceitful, and insidious. They stop at nothing to achieve their aims. They live this way, yet they think they are good people. However, do they have God-fearing hearts? First of all, by nature, are they not simply doing as they please? Do they consider God's house? They think of only their own feelings and their own goals, regardless of the work of God's family. Not only are these people arrogant and self-righteous, they are selfish and deplorable, inconsiderate of God's intention. These people do not have God-fearing hearts. They do what they want and act brazenly, with no sense of blame, trepidation, apprehension, or worry, without considering the outcome. They do not fear God. They regard themselves first in every aspect of themselves higher than God in the truth. In their hearts, God is least worthy of mention and significance and is not within their hearts. Do those who do not revere nor hold God within their hearts attain entry into the truth? No. No. So when they go around merrily, keeping busy and exerting a lot of energy, what are they doing? These people claim to have abandoned everything and suffered for God. But in actuality, their motive, principle, and objective are to benefit themselves. They protect only their own interests. Would you say this sort of person is terrible? I would say yes. What sort of person does not revere God? Is he or she arrogant? Is such a person Satan? What does not revere God? Apart from animals, they include demons. Satan, the archangel, and those who contend with God. Amen. Amen. I felt gutted when I read this. Thinking back during the election process, I felt ashamed. I voted according to my personal interests, without accepting God's scrutiny or reverence for God. 
Brother Zhang was skilled. His fellowship on the truth was practical. Him becoming the team leader would benefit everyone and our work. I was jealous, afraid he'd be elected and surpass me. So I didn't vote for him. I was led by the Great Red Dragon's principle. If autocracy fails, democracy fails. The Great Red Dragon believes if it can't have power, then no one can. Yes. If necessary, it will destroy both sides. Was I the same? If I couldn't get the position, neither should Brother Zhang. I'd rather see the wrong person fill the role and damage the church's work to protect my own prestige. I was selfish and without the slightest reverence for God. I enjoyed many of God's truths and God's kindness while doing my duty. But instead of repaying God's love, I strove for prestige and status, serving Satan, disrupting the work of God. Wasn't I doing evil? I thought about my dismissal a year before because of my struggle for prestige and status. Now, I was in the same situation, pursuing prestige and status, not the truth. If I continued, I'd be rejected by God. Yes. Later, I read God's words. You do not know your place, yet still you battle with each other in the dung. What can you gain from this? If you had reverence for me, how could you fight each other behind my back? No matter how high your status, are you still not a worm in the dung? Will you sprout wings and become a dove in the sky? Why does God call people maggots? In his eyes, these corrupt humans are created beings. But... Do they fulfill their responsibilities and duties? Though a lot of people perform their duties, how is their performance? Their thoughts are not on the truth or following God's way. They stuff their faces, utterly unconcerned. Though it may occur to them to do something, their actions cause disturbance. They exalt themselves, never doing anything beneficial for others or God's house. They think of nothing but seeking fleshly gains, how to fight for status and renown, how to gain acceptance, standing, and a good reputation. They enjoy the food and all that God provides without doing what humans should. Could God like such people? Those who are maggots are worthless, shameless, and in God's eyes have no value. Why do I say such people have no value? God made you and gave you life, yet you cannot perform your duty. You merely freeload. In his eyes, you are worthless and not worthy of life. Are such people not maggots? What should people do to not be maggots? First, find your place and do all you can to fulfill your duty. And you will be connected to the Creator. You can account to Him. After that, consider your loyalty in fulfilling your duty. Do not muddle through. Rather, put your heart into it. Do not toy with the Creator, but comply and submit and act as required. Amen. Amen. As I pondered God's words, I felt distressed. I realized God saw my struggle for status and prestige as vile. Being able to perform my duty in God's house was God's exaltation. My obligations were not fulfilled. Instead, I thought of prestige and status and disrupted the work of God's house. I played Satan's part. Yes. So disgusting and hateful to God. Yes. Mm. God says, no matter how high your status, are you still not a worm in the dung? That's it. I'm a created being, filthy and corrupt, no worth or dignity. So even with a position, I couldn't change what I am. Yes. Yes. 
I couldn't do my duty well, but constantly sought prestige and status. Where was my conscience? My value? Wasn't I just worthless? After understanding my nature from what God's words revealed, I hated myself and became willing to practice the truth. Amen. 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 Later, I sought out Brother Jean and told him of my corruption, revealing my motives and actions in the election. He did not look down on me, but shared his own experience to help me. After fellowshipping, the wall between us disappeared, and I felt free and at ease. Amen. Thanks be to God. From then on, whenever I had difficulty performing my duty, I went to Brother Jean. He'd patiently answer my questions. My own professional skills improved after a while. When I let go of prestige and status, I experienced ease and peace in my duty and I grew closer to God. Thank God. Thank God. I once again escaped the fetters of prestige and status and got a taste of God's salvation. Amen. Amen. Thanks, be to, God. Thanks be to God. The church's election started in October 2017, and I was recommended as a candidate. I felt emotionally unstable. Thinking, it's been over two years since I was removed from my leadership position. And I've heard others have a good opinion of me. They say my fellowship has gotten more practical. I wonder if I can get a leadership position. I realized I was pursuing prestige and status again and thought about how painful the pursuit of those things were. I should stop, forsake the flesh, and practice the truth. Then I thought of God's words. After letting go of the prestige and status of Satan, you will not be constrained by satanic ideas. You'll find release and feel at ease. You will become free and liberated. When that day of freedom and liberation comes, you will feel those things were just entanglements, while what you've gained is most precious, most valuable, and most worthy of being treasured. Amen. Amen. Those things you liked, material pleasures, fame, fortune, status, and wealth, reputation, and the esteem of others will seem worthless. They cause suffering and are no longer desired, even with greater prestige and status. Instead, you will reject them. Amen. Amen. Thanks, be to God. Thanks be to God. My heart brightened, and I knew prestige and status were no longer of value. And practicing the truth and doing my duties as a created being are precious things. Yes. Amen. Thanks be to God. Participating in the election wasn't to fight for a position, but to fulfill my responsibilities. I had to let go of my wild desires and vote according to the principles of truth. That would benefit the church work. Amen. That's, That's true. true. If I were leader, I had to do well. If I wasn't, I wouldn't blame God, but work to the best of my ability. Once my motives for the election were straight, to my surprise, I was chosen as leader. Thanks, 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 be, to Thanks be to God. Seeing this, I didn't revel in it, nor think I was better than others, but I felt it was my responsibility and that I should pursue the truth, doing my duty well. Mm -hmm. Amen. To be worthy of God's salvation. Amen. Thanks, Amen. Be to, thanks be to God. During those three years, God's judgment and chastisement have shown me the harm caused by prestige and status, and I've decided to pursue truth. At times, I reveal the same corrupt disposition. I pray to God, practice the truth, and focus on my duty. I'm no longer constrained by my corruption. When I let go of prestige and status, it wasn't all I'd let go of, but also the fetters Satan had bound me with. I feel so relaxed and free. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. He chose us to die. Yes, it's a big help. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.